Well, good morning, good morning, family. How are you this morning? I'm up early with you guys this morning. This is a wonderful day that the Lord has made. Of course, as always, I will and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I am so excited to be back on with you guys to share this word of encouragement. I said I would be back on. Excuse my voice. <clears throat> I was trying to get back on sooner, but I've just been doing some things how are y'all doing today uh, let me adjust y'all boy i tell you i just you know just go through stuff but anyway um i'm going to get right into it um word of encouragement for today is can you eat what you speak can you eat what you speak amen trying to adjust y'all something going on with me hallelujah so, and we are coming from our key scripture will be uh, James chapter 1, verse 19 through 27. That's where we're going at. Again, uh, try to adjust y'all. Work with me. I guess that's good. Okay, again, word of encouragement is can you eat what you speak? And our key scripture is James chapter 1, verse 20, uh, James chapter 1, verse 19 through 27. But let us begin and let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord God, for this time with my social media family this morning. I thank you, Lord God, that early you bring us together, Lord God, with this word. Let this word and use me however you see fit, first and foremost. But God, I want to thank you for the life of my social media family and every life that's under the sound of my voice. I thank you for the connections, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, for what you are doing in their lives. Now, Lord God, open our ears, open our hearts, open our spirits, Lord God, to listen and to receive, Lord God, and to obey and do what you have called each of us to do. We love you and we give you all the glory and honor for it now. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. I'm gonna try not to be too long with you guys today, but let's get into it uh, again go with me for those that are joining word of encouragement can you eat what you speak can you eat what you speak amen james chapter one let me look let me get it up key scripture james chapter one verse 19 through 27 i will read it quickly but it's a lot um the Lord, um, I got to share this with you guys. Mm, excuse me. Anyway, let's begin. James chapter 1, verse 19 through 27 says, My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry, because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourself. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forget what he looks like. But whoever looks intensively into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight ring on their tongue deceives themselves and their religion is worthless. Religion that God, our Father, accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Oh, it's getting ready to get real crazy this morning. I think with this word, I could feel it. It's for me too. Again, James chapter 1, verse 19 through 27. I'm sorry. I was reading it from the NIV version. And it says, my dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Because human anger, anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. 
anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in the mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forget what he looks like but whoever looks intensively into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it not forgetting what they have heard but doing it they will be blessed in what they do those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongue deceive themselves and their religion is worthless religion that god our father accepts as pure and faultless is this to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the word family 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 the destructive power of words wow this is good the destructive power of words was vividly demonstrated by how water crystals change change uh lord felt like something was whoo i don't know what that was felt like something was just hit me on my neck Let's try this again. I don't know if the Lord Jesus helped me hold because I must be going off. But anyway, let me ring it in. The destructive power of words was vividly demonstrated by water crystals changed water crystals changed their structure according to words spoken to them. In an article in Christian Today, researcher Masua Emota, author of the hidden of the hidden message of water, showed that water crystals which have positive words like love and thanks spoken to them change into the most beautiful snowflake like shapes on the other hand words like fool or stupid cause the water to break down we know that our bodies contain a high percentage of water is it possible then that words could literally tear a person apart no wonder the lord places such importance on our words making their quality equal to the quality of our religion. Yet why it is so hard, especially within our families, to speak consistently with kindness. I'm sobered by the enormous physical and spiritual influence my words can have on the ones I dearly love. It is, is it your prayer today to make the influence a positive, living, giving one when you speak your words? say can you eat what you speak now they in reference to james chapter one our key scripture uh 19 through 27 he is basically talking about listening and doing and also um about our words ha <sighs> let me call you know let's let's just get into this First and foremost, James addressed, he says, my dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen and slow to speak and slow to become angry because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Real simple. Today, it um, we all know. Y'all, I don't like coming on here beating y'all in the head with something, but sometimes you do have to remind people because we know these things. And we all have to take accountability for our words and our actions. Amen. And today, some, you know, I've noticed today, and this is my opinion, that um, a lot of people do not take accountability for what they say and what they do. And also based on uh, whatever's going on, whatever position they have or whatever, some people think that they can say and do what they want um, and get positive results. That's not right. Some people deliberately say things and do things to people to hurt them maliciously to get what they want that's not right and uh some people um don't even apologize <laughs> or either um take accountability for what they say and what they do and then they think that is okay that you're supposed to accept it that that is okay and that's not right amen for the bible says that we should be quick to listen and st the scripture says that we should be quick to listen and slow to speak why do you think God gave us two ears and one mouth? Because when you listen attentively, sometimes you can uh, decipher. And of course, when you are um, discerning the spirit on someone or in a situation, before you be quick to speak, you should listen first so that, you know, your words and what you are about to say will make a positive impact. We always want to make a positive impact with our words. I mean, we, it's, it's bad enough that throughout the world, 
there are, um, you know, we, some of you have grown up in um, places where all you heard of is negative words. You know, um, some of you have been brought up, like myself, you have been brought up uh, in an environment that was abusive and destructive, and you've heard majority negative words than positive words. Amen. Let's be real about that. We have to really get back to the basics and understand that even when, as we're walking and growing with God, our words hold a lot of power and a lot of weight. Amen. And then God, um, J James, it goes on to say, therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save you. Sometimes we have to get rid of the evilness. You know, we all got sin in us. Let's 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 just address this elephant in the room, and let's deal with it this way. Because some of you use your weaknesses or you use your willful sin uh, as an excuse and try to use it as you know, uh, it gives you permission to say and do what you want to do and say to people, and that is not right, and it's out of order. Amen. So um, you got to get rid of all of it, you know, all of it. If you want uh, people and if you want God to trust you with the giftings, with blessings, you got to get rid of all of that junk. You won't have to learn to subject, put your foot in your flesh, amen, and um, watch what you say. And also um, rebuke and pull down those strongholds in your mind of thoughts of words that you want to say. That is really, really not nice. Amen. So then we move on to it says, do not merely listen. Um, I'm on verse 22. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Because sometimes we will hear something and listen to it and try to act like it ain't for us and may say oh that sounds good that, that that's a good word hallelujah that's a good word some of y'all say that in your church home to the people to the um you know when you're receiving a word from your pastors and leaders oh that's good but inwardly sometimes you think oh that's not for me that's not for me nine times out of ten that's for you how about that it is it's for you but like it says, do not merely just listen to the word and so deceive yourself. Because some of us do that, especially some leaders. You know, they think that they get a word from God and it's for the people, but it's for you too. You got to learn how to practice what you preach. And also when God speaks uh, a word to you, oh, it helps you too. I, I, I'm, I'm a definite witness to that. He's told me many a times, you know, yeah, that's you, but you need to eat what you say. Amen. And sometimes, so that's why I say, can you eat what you speak? All right, we moving on. So 23 says, anyone who listens to the word, but does not do what it says, is like someone who looks at his face in the mirror and after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. Real simple. Real simple. See, I love God. Word is real simple, straight to the point. God <laughs> has a way. But some of us, like I always tell you, you need to pay attention and just be honest. His word is so simple that, guess what? It's because of you and your attitude and your ways that you choose to be disobedient or you choose not to listen. Because trust me, when, when the end of this life appears and when we all have to face judgment, I know God going to have it tight and have it right. There's no way in the world because we are all going to be accountable for what we know. Amen. So um, keep that in mind. 25. But whoever looks intensively into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. So plain and simple, if you get a word from the Lord or if, or if God works through someone to give you a word, uh, give you advice, and the best thing is to take heed, apply that. God ain't wasting his time using people to, you know, or you situations to help you just for the fun of it you know so take heed to it don't don't hear something that can clearly help you i mean like clearly help you and sometimes some people get too arrogant or act like they too you know 
they have arrived. I don't know how, sometimes I don't understand how some people could think like that because we're all, uh, <laughs> will never arrive. We're just at different positions and different places in our life. Amen. So that's real basic and simple. Let's move on. It says those who consider themselves religious. Oh, Lord, here we go. We get ready. You done shift now. <laughs> uh, Y'all better hold on to your weaves and hair. It say though it's, it's 26 says those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight ring on their tongue deceive themselves and their religion is worthless. That's basically for leaders. I mean, well, all of us are leaders in some aspect. But talking about religion, oh goodness. You need to keep a tight ring on your tongue. Or you'll deceive yourself. Some of you think within the giftings that God gave you and soon as you start operating in the gift that God gave you that you could just sling your tongue any kind of way. Some of you are so um, uh, comfortable in your position or in the gifting of God that sometimes you tend to forget that it is God that is you that is operating in you to perform what he put in you to give out and to serve others. Amen. Some of you uses um, the gifts and talents that God has placed upon your life and the blessings to, to uh, want to get the accolades. You love when people running down behind you, kissing your butt. And I'm going to go, let's be keeping it real, you know, and uh, giving you praises and everything. But you tend to forget within the moment that it is of God. God put his breath in your body. God put the sound in your mouth for your voice to speak out. It is God that still gives your body the give all your limbs and stuff to move to perform the duties of whatever he needs you to do to get uh, to use the word and your gifting to help and serve his people. Amen. It is God that put the idea, put the thoughts in your head to deliver through your giftings and your talents to help feed his flock and to help his people. Amen. So for um, all of us. Don't get the big head. Some of y'all don't get the big head. Don't get caught up. You know, it's lovely. I mean, I, I mean, I, I embrace different, um, because God uses all of us. We're all made differently, and God speaks to each of us differently, and all of us are used differently. And none of us don't need to uh, so much copycat off of nobody. No, that's why none of our fingerprints are the same. You are an original. You know, what's for you is for you. What God is using and doing through you is for you to do. You have a purpose. It only you can do it, you know. So just rise to the occasion. Stay open to God. Let him use you freely and stay free within yourself and keep your flesh subjected while you are operating in the spirit, listening to the Holy Spirit and doing and serving. Amen. Because people, because the enemy, he gets all up in that when, um, he tried to have you believe that, oh, because you got all these whatever, this, that, and the third, you, you know, you just wonderful. No, you're not. Because let's see, let's, let's be real, real. Because if you strip all of those things away, then what? Because at the end of this life, let's keep it real. God call you home the day of tomorrow. You ain't taking nothing with you. You ain't taking no money. You ain't taking no degrees. You ain't taking no cars. You ain't taking no clothes. You ain't taking no jewelry. You ain't taking no hair. You ain't taking your job. You're not taking your spouse. You're not taking anything with you. You ain't taking your makeup. You ain't taking nothing. It's a done deal. Amen. So keep in mind while we're down here on earth that operating and what God has called you to do, it starts within you, but also ask yourself, especially when you're dealing with others and you are communicating, can you eat what you speak? Amen. Let's move on to 27. Um, you know, I, you know, I ain't trying to come on and, you know, but I'm just being honest. Y'all know me. I'm just, I'm telling you how, I'm just telling you what, God, what me and God talk about. Cause like I say, we in a relationship, so I can tell you. Then it says 27, it says religion that God, our father accepts as pure and faultless is this to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. That right there, keep oneself from being polluted by the world. I say that all the time to you guys. We are not 
of we're we're not of the world. We're just we're just passing through. Some of you, the church, can I say this? I'm gonna be transparent. Lord have mercy. Me and my transparent moment. And you know, I'm I'm not trying to beat up on it, but then again, it just has to be addressed. The body of Christ today, the church, the kingdom, is looking too much like the world. It's looking too much. God's house is some of some of God's houses is looking too much, excuse me, like the world. Can we be honest about that? The pulpit is not even holy no more. It's some people's pulpit is too entertaining. That's why people get all poofed up and they all in their feelings and excited. But when they leave out of the church, they still are hot mess. They are not applying what they have heard because they're not listening. They all in their feelings. Amen. See how the power of your words and yes, your actions can impact. Some of these church homes too entertaining, too fleshy, too messed. I'm just it, it says it, you know, keep oneself from being polluted by the world. That's why it's important to say if we go all the way back up, you should be quick to listen and slow to speak. Even when you are being used by God, whatever God called you to do, you be quick, you be, you know, quick to listen and slow to speak. And remember what you are about to deliver. Make sure you got, well, I got, it's part of my tips. I'm trying not to go ahead. Amen. So, um, I want to also share this because see our feelings get involved too, you know. Too many of us live on the level of our feelings. Oh, Lord, that's another part of the elephant we're going to talk about, too. We're going to talk about your mouth, and we're talking about feelings, too. Can you eat what you speak? Because what we speak affects your mood and your feelings. Too many of us live on the level of our feelings. Inevitably, inevitably we allow our feelings to control our lives. When we feel slighted, we sulk. When we feel wronged, we take revenge. When we feel lonely, we binge. If we fail to check our feelings against the truth of God's word, then they take up permanent residency in our lives. And when this happens, our outlook becomes distorted and toxic. And we may end up doing things we would never imagine. Oh, I'm going to say that again. Because y'all have to understand how slick the times we are in. I know some of you, and uh, you can think back to when you, when you think back on the signs of the times. I remember when I was young, you know, society, of course, when I think about the neighborhood I grew up. In the south side of Baltimore. I'm from the dirty south of Baltimore. But um, the neighbors looked out for one another back then. Um, you got beaten from your neighbor. Show off if you want. If the neighbor found out that you got in trouble, trust me, before I got home, I done got a whooping or got chastised by Miss Johnson, Miss Joanne. And I'm telling you, and it just went on down the line. And then at home, it was like that was the finishing, putting the ice cream on the cake, having to deal with my... um mother and father back then but the neighbor you know your neighbors you was they able to trust people you know i mean yeah it was dangerous there were danger but it wasn't at a level that it is today you know um people don't trust easily neighbors don't trust easily sure enough ain't opening your door up to nobody you can't even let nobody spend the night over your house no more when we was growing up we you know my childhood friends we used to stay night over each other house all the time you know, can't have nobody on your porch. <laughs> I grew up, we used to play on each other's porches. You can't have kids, you know. So um, I say all this to say, you know, um, that if we fail to check our feelings against the truth of God's word, they can take up residency in our lives. And when this happens, our outlook becomes distorted and toxic. And we may end up doing things that we never imagined. So see, you always have to keep your flesh in check. 
and you have to watch what you speak. Amen. So, you know, our feelings mislead us because we don't fully understand them at times. So that's why it is important that we identify our misconceptions so that our feelings become subjected to the truth. So it all goes back to speaking too. So you have to have your feelings under control. You have to be honest, like I tell you guys about yourself and what's in you. Some of you stop holding stuff in. When you're upset, just think, but you still have to release, you know. You still have to release whatever your fear. You have to, you know, take time out and see we live in in a time that we don't take time out for things small like that. See, if people can get a grip on the small things like that, like identifying your feelings, you know, take time to think before you speak. You know, don't just open your mouth because sometimes you open your mouth and stuff just fly all out. I've been guilty of that, you know. You have to practice what you speak, what you think, what you feel, and be honest. We're honest. You know, one thing my pastor says that I like that she says that I, I'm always this way. I always strive to do this. And that is, as far as with God, I always strive to. Who I am behind closed doors is who I am out in the world. You know, whether I'm out with anybody, whatever. It's easier that way. I always tell God, who I am, it makes it easier. Let me be me. Let Because see, you have to be comfortable within you. I, it's too much work trying to be something that you're not. It's too much to try to mask your feelings. It's too much to try to hold things in and don't speak. You know, sometimes the enemy will make you fearful of speaking. If you just think, just always try to speak in love, even in a situation that could be unlovely. You know, if you're in an argument, right, wrong, or indifferent, just take a moment, you know, like I do. Because, see, I had my me's talking to me. <laughs> my, <laughs> my core people, they for real, I'm telling you. I be like, hold up. Now, because, yeah, because sometimes situation can grab you off guard. That's why you gotta, that's why I always tell y'all to be honest about yourself. Amen. You know, because when something catch me off guard, like it did, I had two off guard moments this week. And I was like, I could clap back. <laughs> One of my core cool people say, don't go, don't do cookie. I was like, I could clap back. But would that make an impact? I mean, because that will hurt me. Because guess what? When you speak and you release, you know, when you say words, it's out there and it's hard to pull them back. So I, I got to think. And then you got to think of the consequences that comes behind what you say. Amen. Because sometimes we say things that are very, very hurtful. Now, if that thing come back, then the question is, can you eat what you just spoke? Can you eat what you speak? Can you eat that thing? Because it, it, especially if it came out nasty, looking like vomit, that means when it comes back, you got to suck that all up. Can you eat that? So always take a moment. And um, before you address issues, think them through. Because sometimes, you know, you got to work out your temperament. Some of y'all, y'all don't, like I always encourage y'all to work out your temperaments. Um, be honest about you, your strengths and your weaknesses. And it's not always bad. And even when the, the good things about you practice initiating the good side, when you have to be um, in, you know, when you have to address people or situations, you know, so I have to like, okay, for example, when I want something, when I'm working, when I'm, you know, when I'm handling my business, my kids like mom, slow down. I don't intentionally be trying to rush. I just be my mind be focusing on getting it done. I like getting it done so that I can have time to do what I want to do. I want to take care of all God business if he needs me throughout the day. Then Teresa could do what she want to do. If I want to chill, if I want to take a walk, smell of roses, if I want to talk to whoever I want to talk to, I can do that. But I try to get my business done first. 
not to rush it, but I try to get it done. And to the, to my family, it's like she's right. Hey, oh Lord, because I be I do physically. I just be moving. I be like you know, it's a hustle. You gotta hustle, get it done. You know, if I have to help someone, look, I'm on. I don't like being late for nothing. So if I gotta meet you, if you're doing you, I'm on time. I'll be like, look, time, let's get this done. Let's get it done. Before the enemy tries to come up sometimes and throw a monkey wrench in plans, I'll be like, let's try to get this done. Amen. So um and you know, um help me, Holy Spirit. I'm about to lose my chain of thought. But as I was saying, let me just go back to um our scripture. Uh, we have to keep ourselves, the last part I was um, harping on is we have to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Like literally, it's a lot going on in the world. And like I was saying, the church and uh, yes, some of us children of God are looking too much like the world. How do you expect to lead, you know, unbelievers or, bait or people that who really seeking God to see God in us when we look like them? Amen. Uh, let's keep that real. Let's keep it real, real. You know, I don't care how long you've been walking with God spiritually, but if you, if more of you are showing too, if you're giving too much flesh in your service, whatever your talents, gifting, your son, whatever you're doing, if it's too much, if it's too fleshy, it's messy. People can't eat that. They can't eat that. You know, all of us once, oh, oh, oh Lord, something going down. I seen something flash. That nothing but the enemy. I bind that up in the name of Jesus. But anyway, if um we're all seeking authenticity and truth, no matter what capacity we want it in, whether it's you're seeking a mate, whether you are you know are married and you're working on your marriage, whether you are widowed and you're at a point that hey you know you you're allowing God to get yourself together so that you can find a mate, whether you're broken hearted and after you done gone through you know, letting God mend you back together, you know, um, we all have to, first and foremost, just surrender it to him, so I really encourage you guys, surrender it to him, and it'll help you to get yourself in, together, to understand you, and then you can uh, communicate and speak effectively, some of you talk too much, See, talking is a bunch of chatter without nothing behind it. Some of y'all talk too much and make it sound good, but you can't do nothing behind it. The word of God says that, you know, you know, it has to be action. You know, if you're going to speak something, especially helping folks, don't say nothing you ain't going to do. See what I'm saying? Don't say nothing. <laughs> I'll be telling folks, don't be saying nothing that you're not going to do. Stop that. Don't all that entertain and all that stuff too extra for folks. Don't nobody want to hear all that. Then when people, we are here to meet a need. If I can meet them because it see me, I just want to get it done. Tell me what you want. <laughs> if it's my will, God chooses me to do it. Trust me, baby. I'm getting it done for you. And we moving on. We moving on. It's done. We not going to regurgitate, bring that thing back up. It is finished. Once we work together, getting doing God's business is finished, is done. We move on. Amen. Because time and life is too short, brothers and sisters. So keep in mind, no matter where you at, on the job, with your families, whom you eat, what you speak. Even, of course, those of us that are parents. Can I can I really be transparent? Some of y'all mouth is filthy. Some of y'all talk to y'all kids raunchy raunchy for real some of y'all say words that is definitely not nice some of you call your kids names that's not nice it's not nice amen so think listen and just because you may be the parent you're not always right and even as you know with parenting when you make mistakes with your children, own them. Own them. Don't act like, oh, I'm the parent. Do what I say. Not as I do. That's a heck of a, <laughs> that's a heck of a dang go come in. How you gonna tell somebody do what you say, but not as you do? And your kids see you up there 
doing stuff that for real though, God, you know you ain't supposed to be doing. Think before you speak. Can you eat? Can't you speak? Don't spit, don't spit out nothing you can't take back. Amen. Same thing. You know, be honest about your stuff. It makes relationships and friendships much easier. Amen. So let's move on to my five tips. Because I, I, I didn't want to get too ahead and talk into my tips, which like I always tell y'all, trust me, I've been working on this for a minute because um God brings up little things because I had um two interesting conversation with people that I know and sometimes even with people that we've known for a long time we can get too comfortable but you still have to watch how you talk with them and how you speak to them amen you can't just assume because you may be in a situation or you flying off the handle that they just automatically know what's going on you have to still practice proper communication even with those that you've been journeying with for years so number one five tips on paying attention to what you say number one think before you speak obviously think pray do all that before when you're handling your business when you are at whatever you're doing talking to your spouse when you are first meeting someone think before you speak Number two, ask yourself if what you intend to say is true, necessary, and kind. I'm going to say that again. Ask yourself, number, that's number two. Ask yourself, this is before you respond, if what you intend to say is true, necessary, and kind. Number three, speak freely, but not thoughtlessly with loved ones that's what we're working on that's what i'm working on i can speak freely but i'm practice speak freely but not thoughtlessly with loved ones especially when you're speaking with your partner close friends or family you probably make unconscious assumptions that they'll get the meaning and forgive you for being coarse or blunt while the people that know and care about you probably are more willing to tolerate your verbal gaffes and spears, that doesn't mean they should have to. So stop and think. Would you say the same thing in the same way to a new acquaintance or to your partner on your first date? I know that's tight, ain't it? See, when you really start thinking about what we say. And then it said, um, oh, then I put, instead of, boy, you starting to get pudgy. Now, see, we can, I can say that. You need to stop and think and try to say something like, I think we should work together on eating healthier. So, see, that's that's an example for Murray. Come, like, wives, don't be telling your husband, man, you getting fat. Look at that stomach. You getting them, you as pudgy as heck. That's not nice. That's not nice. Because you don't even know that's your partner. So I gave the example. So try to say something like, you know, I think we should work out together. Give me a little help. There ain't nothing wrong with that for none of us. Amen. All right. That was number three. Number four. I said, I said earlier, take ownership of your statements by prefacing them. Get into the habit of starting comments by saying, like, in my opinion. Or the way I see it. This is the way I see it. As simple as it sounds, using a preface like this can act as a quick reality check, one that urges you to confirm to yourself that this is what you believe, what you want to express, and how you want to say it. Take ownership, brothers and sisters, of the statement by using prefaces. So if you're speaking and you want to give, it's, like I said, give your opinion, say this, look, if someone, let's say, your sister talking to you about her relationship or, you know, a friend of yours is talking about their problem and um, you may disagree with how they're handling it. Just say, in my opinion, don't just come off and say, you know what? You stupid. That was dumb. You shouldn't have did. Blah, blah, blah. No, no, no. That's not nice. You just say, you know what? In my opinion, this is how I would have handled it. Or 
let me tell let um i'm gonna uh, this is how i see it from my point of this you know because you're on one side of the box and i'm on the other side this is how i see it and then that will help y'all to come together to you know conclusions and to solve or it helps better the communication and then they know where you stand on the issue and you know how where they stand amen and that is best to be practiced for my singles i'm i, I for my singles because i definitely have to practice that with uh dealing with the opposite sex or you know even with my core people you know i'm like okay this is, in my opinion this is Teresa thing <laughs> as i say all right let me let me tell you here Teresa thing it's my thing <laughs> so they let but you know i don't come off and try to be like you dumb that's stupid of you to do this or you so silly i mean you know that was just real stupid of you to let him or her do no you don't do don't 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 it be i know some situations and don't but sh you gotta seal your lips you gotta don't don't do that because that it's like you're attacking that person you make them feel smaller you belittle them and i'm um, especially when especially dealing with people that are struggling with mental illness and um yes addictions and stuff like that if you're dealing with people in that caliber or family and friends that may suffer from depression you have to be sensitive to what you say you know your words has to be seasoned you know god says that we have to season and our words should be seasoned with love it's nothing wrong with even when you're in a debate you know that's why you need to use prefaces you know like literally sentence that say you know hey this is just my opinion amen i um sorry i've pawned on that too long okay and number five put yourself in the other person's shoes sometimes the simplest advice is the hardest to follow but this one is worth the effort how would you feel if someone said to you what you are about to say would you understand that they were only being honest or were just trying to be helpful or didn't mean it in that way if you wouldn't want someone to say the same thing to you or say in the same way, then keep your comment to yourself. Amen. Basically, my grandmother used to say, if you ain't got nothing good to say, don't say nothing at all. And she meant that if you don't have nothing good to say, don't say nothing at all. Meaning you don't have, I mean, Pat said she ain't, if you don't have nothing that's why she put the word good she didn't say if you don't have nothing to say she said if you don't have nothing good to say amen so i got some reference scripture also along that you can read on and meditate on with our key scripture i want y'all to go back and to read james 1 uh chapter 19 to 27 so that you can all practice on listening and speaking and also, we're going to take it a step further to really interpret and understand ourselves because it starts with us. This is for leaders, believe, this is for everybody. Everybody, I don't care what position you in, we have to get back to the basics and get back in touch with us in order to be excellent, effective representatives of him. Because we're his ambassadors, his representatives. And some of you that are representatives, and I'm being honest, and I'm going to say this, you know, don't get offended. Some of you that are supposed to be representatives of him look like something else. You look too much like the enemy. I got, I just, I had say it. People don't see the glory of God on you. They don't see god's image on you you don't look like the image of god you look like the image of the enemy you're looking too much like the world amen so sit yourself down and get yourself together <laughs> i'm sorry get yourself together inwardly work inwardly because what's inwardly shows outwardly amen it does it really does some of y'all need to sit down sit yourself because you are representing God. God does not look like that on some of y'all. And it's so sad because there are people that are dying 
like, and I always say it spiritually, they are. They are hungry for the water. They are thirsty for the living water. But who wants to drink from somebody with dirty hands? Who wants to drink with somebody from a dirty mouth? To listen to somebody with a dirty mouth. Amen. Who wants to follow someone with dirty feet? I'm just saying. I just want y'all to think about that. Amen. God gives us opportunity after opportunity after opportunity to get it right. When he works with you privately. And when he gets tired of some of y'all shenanigans. And guess what? History has proven that. He will pull the curtain and you fall. And we have seen many people, leaders and celebrities, fall. It's sad to see somebody fall from grace. Fall. They have a powerful gift, but fall hard. And guess what? Something so simple from the basics is why they fell. Meaning... They weren't in touch with themselves. They didn't know how to communicate and speak. They weren't processing their thoughts before they speak. And all that mixed up with their um, actions, they fell. God doesn't want any of us to fall. He loves us. He loves you just the way you are. He's made you for a specific purpose purpose and some of us who desire mates he made you for a specific person our job is to you know to walk this journey of life out discovering who we are and enjoy it enjoy it enjoy it any day above ground is a good day amen so just keep in mind can you eat now, I got my key scriptures. Oh, I got some reference scriptures. Um, and my first reference, ref, mm, help me see. My first reference scripture that I want you guys to um, ponder on and meditate on and just read it and, you know, just, you know, apply it where it needs to apply. And uh, the first one is Psalms 55, 21. Really think about this one. This one is, you know, woo, this one God is speaking. It says, his talk is smooth as butter, yet war is in his heart. His words are more soothing than oil, yet they are drawn to swords. Ouch. That's a good word. His talk is smooth as butter. Y'all know what type of people I'm getting ready to talk about. Yet war is in his heart. His words are more soothing than oil, yet they draw on swords. Gotta watch folks like that. That's the, that, the enemy uses that real good. You got your smooth talk. That's the people with the gift of gab. Most of them, well, I, most of them. If, they, if their gift of gab is not subjected to God, let me clear that up. I don't want nobody misunderstanding. If their gift of gab, because I know somebody, I'm be honest with you, and they still, you know, in the world, family, friend, I'm telling you right now, this person, their talk is smooth as butter. They can, you know what? You can say that you ain't spending no money with this person, but their talk is so smooth as butter. They would, they'd have been to talk to you out of your pocketbook, what was in your pocketbook. That's how, I'm t yeah, smooth as butter, yet war is in their heart, meaning the motive of their heart. It's a lot going on, fight in their heart. His words are more soothing than oil, yet they are drawn to swords, meaning that tongue is vicious. You know, the tongue cuts like a two-edged sword. Cut you. All right, let me move on. And my next um, reference scripture is Psalms 37, 30, which says, The mouth of the righteous utter wisdom, and their tongues speak what is just. 
And um, the last one, because I got three reference scriptures with, for you guys so that y'all can meditate on it. Proverbs 15, one says, a gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. That's, that, that, that's it right there. That seals the deal. That seals the deal. Before you answer, like I say, our um, five tips real quick, I'm going to run through them again, is number one, think before you speak. Number two, ask yourself if what you intend to say is true, necessary, and kind. Number three, speak freely but not thoughtlessly with loved ones. Number four, take ownership of your statements by prefacing them. And number five, put yourself in the other person's shoes. So, in conclusion, family, never underestimate the significance of the e of even the smallest act of obedience or disobedience, even when per pertaining to what you say and when to say it. Heed the words of C.S. Lewis, which he says, good and evil both increase at compound interest. That's why the little decisions you and I make every day are of such infinite importance. The smallest good act today either by word or deed, is the capture of a strategic point from which we can build up or tear down. So can you eat what you speak? Amen. And remember, you won't have to watch what you say if you watch what you think. You won't have to watch what you say if you watch what you think. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, for this word. I thank you, Lord God, with this time, again, with my social media family. Lord, help us. Help all of us in the area of communication and speaking and doing what you say, when you say, and how you say it. Help us to be excellent, effective representatives of you, Lord God. Let our words impact, Lord God. Let our words take root. Let our words, even though it may take root and impact, let it always be wrapped up in love with one another, also with your people who you bring to us to serve. Hallelujah, Lord. Help us to not be so arrogant. Help us to not be high-minded. I bind up all those distractions, all those negative things, attitudes, and thoughts within us in the name of Jesus. Lord, remove anything in us that is not of you in our minds, in our thoughts, in our deeds, and in our words in the name of Jesus. Lord God, I also right now want to take the time to lift up all the sick and shut in. I want to lift up all those marriages that may be struggling, all the marriages people that are newly merged. I want to lift up to you all the single people, the divorced, the widowed, the brokenhearted, ones that may be suffering mental illness, those that may be suffering in silence, dealing with their emotions, Lord God, from a tragic event, Lord God, of any kind. Lord, I want to thank you. I want to lift these people up and I want to thank you in advance for what you are about to do in their lives, Lord God. Help them to surrender their brokenness. Help them to surrender their pain. Help them to surrender, Lord God, anything, Lord God, that, they, that has become too much for them. Lord, give them, open their mouth, Lord God. Help them to cry out from the depth of their soul that they need you because, Lord, every hour we need you you. It is no doubt about it. Lord, forgive us. Forgive us, Lord God, for our sins. Forgive us for acting like some of us have acted like we don't need you. Forgive us, Lord God, for some of us has turned away from you. Forgive us, Lord God, for some of us have forgotten all that you've done, all that you do, and all that you continue to do in, through, and for us. Lord, you know our hearts, creating all of us a clean heart and renewing us a right spirit. Help us to be faithful. Help us to be loving like you are with us. Help us to be faithful and loving with one another. Help us to be honest, Lord God. Help us to be authentic within our worship, within our praise, within our service unto you unto our brothers and sisters and help us to get back to the basics and Lord God, help us to get down into the crevices of the church, Lord God, 
and help us to rebuild the foundation so that you will be proud when you come back to take the bride and let the bride look exactly like it's supposed to look. I know we have a long way to go, God, but your people, we need you. Go globally, we all need you. Sometimes some of us act like we don't, but forgive them, Lord. Forgive them for they not know what they say or what they do. So I seal this prayer with a praise and letting you know how much I love you. You know I love you with all my heart, with all my mind, with all my soul, and with all my strength. Continue to keep the angels around my social media family. And Lord God, protect them and their families and everyone that is connected unto them. And Lord God, draw by the Spirit, Lord God, those that may listen to this under the sound of my voice. And Lord God, continue to reveal to them who they are in you and help them to continue to walk out and be all which you called and created them to be. Lord God, have your way in and through us. We submit and surrender now. Holy Spirit, take over. We yield unto you now, right, wrong, or indifferent. We yield unto you now and help us to get it right. Get it right, Lord God. Help us to represent you well. In Jesus' mighty and awesome name, and all that we say, do, think, and feel, we are striving to represent you well. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. I had to get all that out. And uh, thank y'all, hallelujah, 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 y'all know it has been something, but um, the Lord laid that we have to be honest. Can we eat what we speak? Can we eat what we speak? You know, there, you know, can I just be honest about something? You know, lately, um, you know, yeah, because me and God, we working, we, you know, I'm always working on me, you know, whatever area he shows me. That's why you have to pay attention, even with the smallest of areas, you know, um, some things, you know, even though we may be busy in our natural lives, a lot of us are having, you know, we have jobs, children, all of that, us, we, we wear many of hats, but um, don't get too caught up in the hats that you wear, that you don't spend time with the Lord, and most importantly, don't get so caught up with the distractions that the enemy throws, which it could be challenging. But you have to be honest with yourself and honest before the Lord. Stop making excuses about your stuff. Because some of you always throw up the stuff. I'm busy. As if that is um, okay. That's, you know, that gives you leeway to be excused from doing what God called you to do. No. Because it, 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 it wasn't excusable for Jesus. Jesus didn't say, Lord, I'm busy. I ain't got time down crowd or give me a second. I'll get back to you. He didn't say all that. He didn't say, I'm going through it. <laughs> That's the main thing. See, we have to stop using that as an excuse for being obedient or for not um letting God use you. It could be scarce. It could be scared um nervous in that time when being used by God, but you have to um listen and pay attention and know what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. I always tell you, obedience is threefold. Do what God says, when he says it, and how he says it. Sometimes God will give y'all a word and y'all so quick to throw it out there or give you a service. You got to do it when he says do it. Amen. So I love y'all so much. Y'all know I'm getting ready to come back. I'm getting ready to see who gets touched. Let me, God, I don't even want to mess the thing up. I want to touch the screen and see who could be on. I just don't want the phone to fall and stuff, I tell you. Let me see. I'll, hold up. I don't see nobody on, so I don't know. Oh, yes, I did. Oh, how you doing? Oh, yeah, Carl. Oh, oh hi, Renee. Oh, oh, hold up. I got to hit the wave. I got to hit the wave. How you doing, Renee? Oh, Laura on. Hold up. They going up so fast. They going up so fast. Oh, oh, oh. Hold up. They going up so fast. Oh, I got to hit the wave. Oh, Belinda on. Oh. <laughs> Oh, let me hit the wave. How y'all doing? Oh, hi, Carl. Thank y'all for being on. Oh, oh, my brother Earl on. Oh, hi, Earl. Let me hit the wave. <laughs> How y'all doing today? Oh, Yvonne is on. Hi, Yvonne. How you doing, mama? Let me hit the wave. What y'all doing? I'm all excited. Oh, Elsie on. Hi, Elsie. Oh, it's so good to see you. Let me hit the wave. <laughs> How y'all doing? <laughs> Oh, how y'all doing? Oh, hi, Laura. Welcome. How are you? Let me hit the wave. How you doing, sis? How you doing? Oh, it's so good for y'all to be on. Hi, Renee. It is so good. Oh, y 
y'all y'all i'm so excited thank y'all for being on with me this morning oh i just love y'all this sets me off i'm telling you see it's the little thing it's the little thing amen and see when we get back to the basics and we you know because some of us we have swayed from the basics communication sometimes what you say can minimize a whole bunch of drama because see i can't do no drama I'm sorry, to be scared, I can't do no drama, for real. Either I'm going to cut it, I'm going to try to say, especially, well, it depends on the situation, because all situations are, you know, uh, you know, different, depending on who it is and what's going on, but I don't do no drama. I don't do no drama. I don't, can't do no drama. My temperament won't allow it, you know, make me, it's, it's like fleas, I can't, you know, make me itch like fleas, can't do no drama. Mm -mm, them drama filled people for real i'll be prayed i'll be like lord douse me with the holy oil when you gotta deal with drama filled people i'll be like too much work because sometimes all that drama could be solved because of the way you speak you see what i'm saying something small the tone of your voice what you say think before you speak some people just don't think before they speak so that's the challenge can you eat what you speak so all this week from the, with, with today thursday so you got into next thursday you got a whole well, I want y'all to meditate on the period, but you got some time to meditate on our key scripture, James chapter 1, 19 through 27. That's the Lord lengthy, but it's good for you to read in your private time with the Lord. You also have the reference scripture, Psalms 55, 21. His talk is smooth as butter, yet war is in his heart. His words are more soothing than oil, yet they are drawn like swords. Then you have the next reference scripture, Psalms 37, 30, the mouth of the righteous utter wisdom and their tongue speak what is just. And you have Proverbs 15, 1. So you got, y'all got some homework. 15, 1 to meditate on a gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. So can you eat what you speak? Amen. So I am so, so glad to be on with y'all this morning and i'm so glad that i all is well i'm glad that we are above ground because any day above ground is a good day amen so we gotta really keep that in mind but i'm not gonna hold y'all hostage no more but it's so good to see y'all oh 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 some of y'all about to call oh 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 this is so wonderful but continue to love on one another Continue to support your leaders, pray for them, cover them. You know, just because they're in positions, their positions that they are in is of a higher accountability. God is highly, they are accountable. They are at a higher accountability level to God with what they have to do to put things in order to serve effectively to us. That's why it's important, even not just your Christian leaders, but these political leaders. Some of them off the we as the body of christ we really got to come together and pray for some of these political leaders uh, we do uh, y'all know i don't really like talking about politics in the world because we can go on and we can't keep speaking negative like i said this is 27 2019 we are speaking life you got to speak life over everything even over things that don't even look right speak life into that blow life into it you know, it's time to step up and step out because it's still all about him and always know that you're going forward. Focus on real wins and reduce distractions. You practice that every day, you know, um, as I do it, it makes the decision process, it makes things run smoothly. Like I said in the last video, I'd rather go through my trials and tribulations with the Lord instead of going through them with the enemy because you know he don't play fair. He's all about stealing, killing, and destroying, and he'll do it by any means necessary, and he starts with the mind. So guard your mind. Make sure you have on your helmet of salvation, your breastplate of righteousness, your belt of truth, your shield of faith, your sword of the word, and your shoes of preparation. You got to be armored up every day. Every day. You can't, every day you got to be armored up. Amen. So I love y'all with all the love of Christ. I don't see no more dinghies. I don't see no more dinghies. And I want y'all to take care of yourselves. Oh, Sue on. Hi, Sue. Let me hit the wave. How you doing? <laughs> oh, and hello. 
hello 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 to my new followers hello y'all my new followers thank y'all for joining me when y'all do thank y'all for supporting me when y'all can thank y'all for y'all words of encouragement your comments your you know some of you i talk to some of you you know we inbox and we talk um we may talk on the phone from time to time i thank you you know, I love uh, communicating with God's people. Some of y'all, I, you know, even to my new people, I got some, I met some new people. Yeah. I don't know. I, I met one person. I mean, we've been, we've been communicating, but um, uh, our, you know, what we're learning about each other, whew, we a little rough together. You know, our personalities is a little rough, but God is working us through because God has spoken the purpose and. You know, we don't want to call with that, but I guess it's, I guess you can say, like I say, your flesh and your feelings and our personalities, which all relies on our flesh. You know, it could be, you know, something dealing with folks, you know. So y'all, um, y'all have a wonderful, wonderful blessed day. It is going to be like 85, I think, or 89 degrees down here in Baltimore. It's hot, yo. And uh, I told God. And see, he done, you know, I, I, I love him. He, he knows me. I'm like, look, you know, if you could bring me back that 80 degree weather with, you know, with the nice little breeze, that really perfect springtime, you know, day that you brought, we could have that all year long. But uh, when you bring the humidity up, and you're talking about 89 and it's hot and sticky. I was like, oh, you nah. know, that ain't my cup of tea. Amen. So I love you so much with all the love of Christ. Um, God bless each and every one of you. If you're traveling, I decree and declare traveling mercies over you. If you're at work, I decree and declare that the hand that your hands are blessed at work, that the unity is strengthened at the job. If you are wherever you are, I decree and declare that all will work according to the will of God and that he that you represent him well and that you will come back and return home to your families safe, sound and everything is intact the way that you left it. Continue to, like I say, uh, pray for you, um, take care of yourself, take care of your leaders, uplift your leaders, your mentors, take care of your family and friends, uh, continue to love on one another. If you have any situations you got to deal with folks, just work them out to the best of your ability. And for those that um, you may be having difficulties with someone, and if you've done all you can do about it, then cast that over to the Lord and he will take care of it amen and you just remove yourself in love because some situations and uh some people you have to remove yourself from so just do it in love try not to get angry try not to say anything think before you speak but keep in mind before anything can you eat what you speak for real so watch your mouth because this is the most deadliest weapon on earth i love y'all uh, you know i can keep y'all and i can go but because i'm so excited i love y'all so much i don't see no more dengue I don't say no more, but I love all of y'all for joining. I know it is. Um, it's probably something. I don't know, because I be touching this phone, and it is. My daughter, like, Mommy, got to get another phone. Cause, you know, after you had these phones for a while, I think I had this phone for a couple of years. I think it's time for an upgrade or something going on, because, see, I don't know. You know, I, my thing is, as long as it works, as long as it do what I want it to do, I'm cool with it, <laughs> you know, amen? But still, you know, my kids keep me up, and they like, you need another I'm like, well, y'all, somebody get me a double phone. Amen. So I love y'all so much. God bless y'all. Thank y'all again for being on. And I will be back on either with another word of encouragement or even a scripture for today. But until then, continue to live, love, laugh, and be happy. Continue to strengthen your relationship with the Lord. Take good care of yourself and get back to the basics. Amen. And we got to stay unified. We got to stick together. My brothers and sisters in Christ, we have to build and um, take care of God's house because he will take care of ours. Amen. So I love y'all so much. God bless y'all. I got to go. Got some things to do now. Yeah, it's almost 11 o'clock. Been on here long enough. Kept y'all houses long enough. So I love y'all. God bless y'all. I don't want to let y'all go. I don't want to let y'all go. Y'all already know how I get so spoiled with y'all. I don't want to let y'all go, but I love y'all so much. God bless y'all. And have a wonderful, wonderful day. And I will. I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna stay away too long. I'll be back on with either another word of encouragement, which I do have another word, 
um, I think with this next word, man, guys, talk, we're going to talk about relationships as far as um, uh, for my singles. Oh, Lord. You know, because, uh, you know, that's an area for me. It is. It's an area. It's an area. Not nothing bad, you know, because I've grown a lot, but it's an area. Amen. So we'll be dealing with the singles, you know, just dealing with, you know, relationship. It'll be a relationship type you know encouragement but um i'll you know i'll give you you know the preview yeah it'll be a, i'll be dealing with relationships our next word of encouragement so um stay tuned and i love y'all and i thank y'all and um again uh how to you know good morning to my new followers and um i look forward to continuing to talk with some of you and all that good stuff and some of you were working on some good stuff so i love y'all God bless y'all. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.